Hello and welcome. How are you doing? Yes, hello Charlie. He's got some poof. Interesting wine recipe for you today. Brand new for me. I've been trying to find a recipe ever since my postie asked me to make this type of wine. It took me a while to find the recipe. Then all of a sudden, last week, I found a recipe on Reddit. Someone had the same idea to make this wine a licorice wine. So thank you. There's a link down below to the original thread of how he came up with the licorice creation. So I'm copying his recipe and I'm going to be using it to make this wine. I am altering it slightly to make it my own, my own style. Basically, I'm just throwing everything in, making a really simple recipe. This arrived in the post today. 500 grams of licorice root powder. Oh yes. I'm excited. I love licorice, I do. And aniseed and all those wonderful things. And I can't wait to try this. I'll put a link to the licorice root that I'm using down in the description below. So if you want to try this recipe, you know what I'm using. I'm going to throw everything straight in, ferment it out, see how it turns out. It's a trial run, may not be brilliant, but it may be fantastic. The first thing we need to do, crack open the licorice root and have a taste. That is smelling sublime. So first thing we need is the fermenting buckets. And I'm simply going to pour the 500 gram bag straight into the bucket. And the amount of dust, the licorice dust that's coming off this powder, awesome. Carry on pouring it all in. And then wait for the dust to clear. Smelling awesome. I have a set list of things that I do like to add to my wine. If you've seen other videos I've made, you will probably know what they are and why I add them. But initially, I'm going to add one banana. Bananas add a great deal of body and an oomph to the wine, which is fantastic. So that's what you want, nice banana. Peel it. And shove it straight into your bucket. Peel as well. Chunk the banana, nothing fancy. Doesn't need to be sliced or diced, just broken up and thrown into your bucket. Simple. And the next thing, a squirt of lemon juice, it helps with the acidity, helps bring out the flavours really well. Decent squirt. I never measure much at all when it comes to wine making. Just word for luck. Main thing is, get the ingredients in there. You can tweak and adjust the recipe later on once you get to taste how it all is becoming and becoming friends. Awesome stuff. Next up, I'm adding a cup of tea. Tea adds tannin to the wine, which brings out a great venosity to the wine. A certain oomph about it. So tea bag as well, straight in the pot. You watching? That's how we do it, boy. I'm going to be adding about three kilos of sugar. That's about a kilo and a half per gallon. I will adjust the sugar level afterwards to work out how much alcohol it might be. I'm thinking it should be 13-ish percent by the time I'm done with the three kilos of sugar. Pour straight in. I am also adding a sprinkle of bicarbonate of soda. To be honest, I don't know why, but apparently... Why? Part of the... The recipe on Reddit that I'm following, sort of following, adapting, said they've come across a drink from Syria which uses crushed licorice roots with bicarbonate of soda added. 
So he's using it from a traditional Syrian recipe. So I'm using his traditional Syrian recipe adapted. So I'm going to put a sprinkle in. About a, about a tablespoon. And I'm pouring over boiling water. And I'm going to fill it up to the two gallon mark. Probably half with boiling water and half with cold. And give it a really good stir. Get all those flavours mixed up and becoming friendly. It's thick, it's sloopy. Brown looking. Reminds me a bit about my treacle wine. It has that sort of smell to it. That treacly literacy. That might go well if I blend them together maybe. This, I have to say, is looking fantastic it is. Dark, thick, gloopy, tasty. What I'm going to do now is let this cool down to room temperature and take a hydrometer reading before I add any yeast. So come and join me in a minute now when it's cool. It's been sat now for an hour or so, two hours maybe whilst we had dinner. It's been cooling down to room temperature, becoming lovely it has. And I'm about to measure the specific gravity of it. It smells oaky, woody, very dusty. It has that dusty aroma to it, it has. It smells as though you're sniffing an old, musty book. Which is brilliant. Woody, paperish. It's going to be awesome. Anyway, that's the doobie doo number game thing. Work out if it's going to be strong enough to be a wine. It should be. So come on, let's go and do. So the aim is to drop the hydrometer into the tube for the sample in. And hopefully the reading will be high. The higher the reading is, the more alcohol it has the potential of producing. So we're going to drop it in. If it floats nice and high, there's enough sugar. If it sinks all the way down, that's not too good. We need to add more. So the more it floats, the better. Ready? One point eleven. Awesome. So the wine's gonna be about fourteen percent. Maybe a little less, because I'm expecting all the sediment, all that dust, to drop down and be filtered out when I come to rack it. So all that's left to do now is to add the yeast and the nutrient to it. Then we're going to let it stand for a few days, fermenting in the primary, and add it to the demijohns in about three, four days' time. Fantastic. Come okay, on then, next bit. I'm using generic dried wine yeast. Bob standard, the basic type you can buy. The link for it is down below. I recommend it. It does the job. Nothing fancy, but it works. So I'm adding about a teaspoon's worth. Just throw it straight in. And same principle for the yeast nutrients. About a teaspoon, your bog standard nutrient, throw it in. I do think Marmite would be a great yeast nutrient for this licorice wine as well. But I'm sticking to the standard type, El Cheapo. So again, about a teaspoon gets thrown into it. So all we need to do now is set this aside in a warm place next to a radiator and let it ferment in the primary for about three days. Then we'll come back to it and rack it into demijohns. Happy days. See you soon. Well, hello, how are you? A few days have passed since I made up my licorice wine. It was going mental in the fermentation buckets, having a right party in there. I don't know if the licorice is a great source of nutrition for the yeast. But it was doing mental it was. Earlier today, I transferred the wine from the primary, the big bucket, into the demijohns. In the process of transferring the wine, some air got in, which is good. It helps invigorate everything. And it really did. Anyway, here it is. Look at those airlocks. They're going balmy. 
bubbling and all the foam and froth is going from the bottom bit into the airlock and going everywhere. Making a right mess in the kitchen it is, flowing over. So I'm going to let these stand on the draining board for as long as the wife lets me and then put them somewhere warm to carry on fermenting. They are smelling divine, they are. I'm really, really impressed with the progress that the wine is making. It's done to a drop, it will. I'm sure it will. I really can't wait to try this licorice wine. So why don't you come back at some point when it's ready and do the taste test with me? I have a lot more videos I'm going to make soon, both about wine and life here on Edie in Orkney. So that's going to be really interesting. Now that spring is coming, we can outside a lot more, more adventuring, more sightseeing, more fun. So why don't you subscribe and stay tuned and I'll see you all soon. Ta-ra!